In this video, I would like to show you uh, through another video uh, from this guy uh, how ideal gas and real gas could be different in a practical experiment way. So um, we'll watch a video together, but in case you still want to watch a video alone, I'll put a link in the description. Um, and for my video here, I'll play along and I'll do uh, my commentation along the video when learn about the gas laws or maybe teaching the difference between ideal and real gases. I have a couple of balloons here. Behind the balloons I have a pan that's filled with liquid nitrogen. It's a metal pan and that's placed on a styrofoam block just to insulate the pan. It keeps the nitrogen in there a little longer. These balloons happen to be filled with different gases. This one's filled with air. This one's filled with helium. You want to disguise the fact that this is so on the right hand side this is helium and on the left hand side it is air air means a mixture of different gas uh, like mainly nitrogen uh, and oxygen and maybe some uh, co2 like what you are breathing right now this is filled with helium from your students if you fill this balloon such that it's pretty easy to palm with your hand that'll that'll make it so the density of the balloon is is greater than that of air so it won't rise that helps all right this part is not very relevant but then uh i mean not relevant to our main focus but i think that's all right uh so basically he's saying uh not filling the helium as much so then uh, it won't rise so then it, two of these look very similar so the first thing that he put in you can see it was a left hand side that one that means the one with the air so let's take a look and as we'd expect as the temperature of the gas in the balloon. Oh, one thing that I should say is uh, this is not a safe way to do since these are liquid nitrogen. So if you try to search a uh, liquid nitrogen, you will find uh, it is like very cold. It will be of temperature around negative 210 degrees Celsius to negative 196 degrees Celsius. So basically it means that if you touch the liquid nitrogen, you uh, get something called a froze bite. So you get hurt simply. So don't, you should wear gloves or use a pair of tongs to help. The balloon goes down. The volume of the balloon goes down. Now I think it's instructive to use Charles's law to predict how much this balloon uh, would be expected to shrink if it behaved ideally. So if we start with so a- Charles law is um, using the relationship between volume and temperature, then you should be able to get it. Uh, in fact, I will recommend you to try it yourself or I can, uh, well, maybe I'll just try here to help you to uh, figure it out. So um, if you don't actually remember Charles or that's actually fine as long as you remember PV equals to NLT. And notice that uh, one thing that we are maintaining constant is of course uh, N, N is number of, number of mole, which you can see uh, there's no leakage or we are not pumping air in, so N must be constant. R must be constant because it's simply gas constant. The other thing would be pressure because pressure we are now relying on the atmospheric pressure so uh, the only thing that gets changed is the temperature and its volume so if you try to put rearrange this equation you get uh, v over t equals to n r p and since this whole thing is a constant we don't change it and therefore v over t its ratio remain constant and this is the idea of Charles law also and uh, if you try to pick this uh, you can try to do the calculation on how much it is supposed to shrink in that case uh, or you can see in the video uh, but of course I if you can I will recommend you to pause the video right now and try it yourself so if you try to uh, really try to do it then you can rearrange let me use the red color you can try to rearrange the equation as in v1 over v2 because we don't know the volume but then we can find a change, right? So V, uh, V1 over V2 equal to T1 over T2. And since the temperature, it was, uh, say room temperature. So it was like 25 degrees Celsius, let's say, but then you have to change it to Kelvin. And this is something that you should pay attention whenever you use I do guess law. Temperature must be in Kelvin. You cannot say uh, this is a ratio then um, using degrees Celsius is fine because the conversion is not by multiplying or dividing is more like a offset by 273 uh, degree so uh, this is something you have to do and then uh, when you change to liquid nitrogen as we find uh, it should be like let's say negative 200 maybe so negative 
200 plus 273 then you can get the calculation by using your calculator so it will be around uh, 4.08 for v1 over v2 so that means v1 will equal to around 0.4 sorry 4.08 v2 in other words uh, it will be around four times originally and now you become a quarter so if you try to express it like this okay v2 the new volume will be around a quarter of the original and i suppose this is uh, roughly yeah this is roughly what he also calculated as well let's continue he has a room temperature that's 300 kelvin and it gets cooled to the temperature of liquid nitrogen which is 77 kelvin uh, of course not there we go uh you do a calculation and you'll find that the balloon should shrink to about roughly one fourth of its original size that's a lot smaller than one fourth of its original size so if you look at it's the balloon, shrunk to zero volume is what it looks you like in my can eye. see I mean, uh, the almost balloon like almost shrink pushing that balloon out whatsoever but into a like a piece of paper. Like like if you try to look at that, it's like there's not nothing inside. So uh, you can see the volume is much much less than uh, a quarter of the original. And by the way, you may want to think about why, of course. But by the way, you can see uh, what happened when he took it out and place it on the table and that is uh, it will go back into original shape and that is because uh, it is warmed up again by the warmer apparently warmer air in the room so what's going on when this balloon is placed in the in the liquid so you can kind of feel it's a bit crispy is, and of course if you put it again it will shrink back at to 77 Kelvin. like the volume we saw gas and oxygen gas are going to start to display a large amount of intermolecular okay, forces we can speed up this part. and that's going to cause the uh, gas to shrink to a much smaller volume than it would if those gas because we will wait to see uh, what happened to the other one which is the helium it does not behave ideally at 77 Kelvin it's probably much less than a quarter of the original volume alright, okay, now again, this is air, helium and now this is helium and this is the best part of the uh, experiment and again it's fun to disguise the fact that this is helium in this balloon from your students and we'll try the same thing. I'm going to place this balloon into the liquid nitrogen. And I'm going to try the same thing here. I'm going to try to... Okay, now he's doing a little bit better, although he should still wear gloves. Shrink this balloon into liquid nitrogen. And initially, it looks like it's going to do the same thing. However, this balloon really resists my attempts to shrink it. And just to show you that I'm not cheating here, I really am trying to shrink this balloon. Yeah, and I believe, yes, uh, you simply have to trust him that he's really trying to push the balloon. And of course, trusting him on that, I mean, the fact that this is really helium and the one we tried earlier was really air. Effort. I'm going to go ahead and pour some liquid nitrogen on top of it, which really tends to shrink a balloon, really cools the gas. And inside. again, this is even more dangerous that you, when you try to pour the liquid nitrogen uh, onto this, uh, be careful that it may spill and again you uh, he should wear gloves and also make sure there's not no one nearby or uh, he should even wear uh, some like lab coat or something in case uh, it spilled on your skin directly uh, very well i'm gonna pour the nitrogen on top that's about as far as it's gonna go it won't shrink flat like the other balloon it shrinks of course and it probably it shrinks will come back up well within the but then you can see small, it, it did it not shrink it did not shrink to uh, zero size, like zero volume size. And you feel like it kind of resists to shrink as well. And uh, if you could roughly do the estimation, then you can see it is uh, much closer than our estimation of a quarter size uh, when you try to get the balloon to the liquid nitrogen temperature. So what do you think about this experiment is showing? Oh, this is a bigger balloon. Anyway, I think this, this is uh, good enough. So I think the, the basic idea to show like why I want to show you this video uh, is that uh, you can find the difference between ideal gas and real gas. That if you have something like helium, which could behave more like ideal gas, then uh, you can get the prediction in your calculation more closely. While air, uh, which 
uh, of course, all of these are real gas, but then they don't behave close to ideal gas, and therefore uh, the mathematical prediction would not be accurate. Okay, and uh, if you try to step one, like one step backward, uh, then you may want to think. So how come helium would behave more like ideal gas? Of course, again, it is real gas, but how come helium can behave more like ideal gas than air? Then you have to go back, refer to the assumptions again, or the behavior again. So other than uh, temperature, because temperature apparently, apparently is the same, but then how come uh, it would be behaving more like ideal gas? And that would be something to do with the density of the helium, of course. As you know, helium has a low, much lower density than the normal air. And, and hence, apparently, it can fulfill these assumptions. I think that is pretty much what I want, I want to say. If you would like to go through this video again alone, uh, I will put the link in the description. You can go through it. Okay, and I think he is uh, trying to put this helium balloon or oh, this big one into it and then try to string really small and I think this one is better because uh, then the effect of the elasticity of the balloon would be less in that case okay so that's all